Uh, so, last talk, let's do this. Um, so as just mentioned, uh, Cover is a code coverage library for Racket. Um, no one here has played with the code coverage library before. All it does is tell you when your tests aren't running your code, which is something your tests should be doing. Um, so uh, this talk is mostly just going to be a demo and me showing off what Cover can do. Um, I'm going to be running Cover the talk on one library, uh, one library I wrote that I just want to plug a little bit because I think it's cool. Um, it's a real library that makes images for Wikipedia. It uh, renders um, particular type of algorithm, complex, uh, convex hull algorithms, so that people reading the Wikipedia page can actually understand what they're doing. Uh, so this is another uh, another one from this library. Um, so yeah, this is running on real code. Um, so how does cover work? Well, so I know some of you use Dr. Racket and uh, You've probably turned on the built-in code coverage. Um, unlike that, this is completely separated from the IDE. So if we just pop down into our shell where our project is, and just like RACO test, replace RACO test with RACO cover, uh, and we can generate a coverage port for the whole project. Um, the OS is running. Uh, I'll talk a little bit uh, more about cover's goals. Um, cover wants to be an extensible uh, code coverage framework. So what I'm going to show you right now is the HTML output, but you can easily extend it to output to different things. Um, I'll talk a little bit about what those are later in the talk. Um, and also, Cover's goal is to run on all the Racket languages, which I will show you in a bit. But just for starters, the basic uh, coverage view, oh, this does not look so good on tiny screens, um, uh, looks a little bit like this. Uh, we can see that I have been pretty bad about testing this project. Um, I should fix that. Uh, so let's see if we can figure out how to get my code coverage up. Um, so this view just shows you all the files in your project and how well they're covered. So we can see that GIF and draw are the worst tested files in this project and they're graphic stuff, so I really don't want to test that. Uh, so let's look at the algorithm. So Look at the, the uh, algorithms that I showed you before. Um, these are the implementations of them. This one's tested pretty well, but this one isn't. Let's see if we can drill into it a little bit and see. Uh, yeah, basically none of this code is tested, except for some stuff at the bottom. Bad me. Um, I shouldn't have done that. So we can fix that. Um, I'm lying. I actually did test it. But this is a state I was in. Um, a while back when I was first writing this, where I had not, uh, where I had test for one of them and not the other one, and I just pulled them out into this um, separate library, or a separate file that will test all of them at once. And now we can rerun the code coverage. Oh, rerun it instead of reopen it. Uh, and it will, and you can see that the code coverage will have increased. Um, this will take a couple of seconds. Um, but while it's running, I want to point out something else that this code coverage number is actually a little bit of a lie. Because this is telling me, across all the expressions of my project, which ones are covered. But my test files included in that. That doesn't really count, right? You know, if I have 10,000 lines of test testing two lines that don't actually get run, it's going to look like I have good code coverage. But there we go. Uh, that's not actually true. So this new number of 67% isn't right. Uh, and so Cover will let you exclude files uh, from your coverage report without actually skipping running them. So that's this dash n flag. You can say exclude my test directory. And this will run everything in my test directory, but it won't add it to my output. So we'll see that code, code coverage number go down, hopefully. Um, and this is also true of, say, the infinite RKT, because coverage just finds RKT files like Racco test and sticks them in there. Um, so this project's a little bit slow. Um, here we are. Now you can see that, yeah, I lost like 5% test coverage. Um, and when we were building cover, we found that we were doing dash n tests, dash n info RKT, dash n scribblings a lot. So cover also comes with this dash b flag to just exclude the stuff that you're probably going to exclude every single time you run cover. Yeah, basically. Um, uh, b is basics. 
Um, so actually, the reason it's B is kind of interesting. It didn't used to be B, but uh, so it leads right into the next thing I was talking about. Cover tries to support everything that Racco test supports. So um, uh, if Racco test has certain command line arguments, we want to offer them. And so it's dash B because all the good names were already taken. Um, so for example, uh, oops, this is a little bit small. I apologize about that. Um, the uh, Racco, uh, Racco test has a dash C flag. You just pick some arbitrary collection and run it. So we can do, let's see how well tested the pick collection is. Um, pick is kind of big, so this will take a little while. So we'll come back to this and see how well it libraries actually tested. Um, so cover supports more than just the command line flags from Dr. Racco, uh, for, from Racco test. Um, so for example, uh, in the Infinite RKT, Racco test will find an emit paths um, option and not run those. Cover will do the same thing, and it also comes with a cover omit paths in case it's something you just want cover to, to skip. Um, and as of this version, it supports all the new features that Racco test uh, has, like regular expressions in these and test include paths, and also I think module suffixes. Um, so, where was I? Oh yeah. Um, and so I mentioned before that we want the output of cover to be extensible. And so we made some extensions to it. Um, I know who here uses GitHub? Who here uses Travis? Who here would like their code running in Travis to magically generate code coverage for them? Yeah, awesome. So this does that. Um, with this, you can just, uh, once you configure the service called coveralls, which is fairly easy, you can just add one little line to your Travis YAML file and uh, also install the right uh, this library, and you will get well, coverage reports shipped right from Travis to coveralls. So we can see that mm, when I did my release, we lost code coverage. I'm not quite sure why it happened. That's not good. Um, and you can add your own uh, coverage format. So if there's some service that we've implemented, you want to play with it. Um, whoops. Uh, there's this nice API in cover that will let you create custom output format, stick it in the package server, and anybody can use it. Um, and hopefully we should actually be releasing a new one of these soon for CodeCov, if anyone wants to use that instead of coveralls. Um, so that's the basic overview of cover. Um, but before we go, let's see how well picked did. Uh, so this, uh, so the, the, it's still, it's under, not under the picked um, library, but it's under the picked collection. So this grabs the tests. Um, oh, there we go. Coverage index. Let's see how good they are. Mm, yeah, this is partially my fault. I added some tests to this, but we need more. But yeah, this is, you know, one of the cool things of code covers. You can find what libraries aren't tested and test them. So that's all there is for cover. Pretty simple library. All right. Hand of applause. Thank you. All right, questions? How granular is the exclusion method? If I've got several modules in a file, can I do it that granular? Is it on a file? So you want, or library you want to basis? exclude submodules? Yes. Um, so, cover actually by default does exclude submodules, um, and there are flags in the command line for configuring that, so that way your test submodules don't get uh, slurped up with your coverage results. All right, other questions? Can you say a little bit about how this works? It seems magical. What happened? Um, yeah, so uh, unlike the first talk this session, I tried to avoid that because it's pretty ugly in the internals. Uh, what it does is it relies on the fact that all racket languages compiled down to the same language, and then it slurps in that language and spits a bunch of annotations across your code that will track when code is run, and then runs the code and collects the, and collects the results of those annotations. Um, and then does some more crazy hacks to get things working, like this will now cover macros and things that happen at compile time, um, which sort of just works by uh, 
tricking the logging system to let me communicate across phases. Now is on a scale from one to ten, how crazy would I be <laughs> to use Kafka? Um, completely not crazy at all. I've only found one library it does not work on, and that library is the single most complicated macro in existence. So, um, yeah, sorry to people who implement type bracket. I can't run this in the type bracket implementation yet, but everything else works that I know of. Uh, thank you. Um, so I'm sure you wouldn't really use this in, say, uh, production code, but I'm, I'm curious. You say you're uh, slurping in uh, fully expanded code and adding a bunch of annotations. Uh, I'm, I'm curious how this does, in fact, affect the, 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 the performance of the code you're perf doing um, coverage testing on. So um, for code that happens at runtime, I see about a 2 to 3x slowdown. Slow um, for code that happens at compile time, for reasons I can't explain, it seems to be a little bit worse, maybe four times. Um, so if you have something like a very big project, you probably run this asynchronously. Um, so like uh, on the bits of the type recommendation this can run on, it takes like two hours. Um, Uh, so given the way that you're sort of, you said like slurping in the program and doing the fully expanded code and everything, how do you know that the actual like line counts and expression counts you're getting are the correct ones and it's not some artifact of sort of the expansion process or something like that? So let me show you something that will answer your question. You see how, the for, how this for loop claims that just this isn't run? It's lying to you, right? Yeah, so the answer to that question is I can't. And this is a bug in the for loops that I have been unable to track down. If you find behavior like this, it is a bug in whoever wrote that macro. And they should go and fix it. I am a uh, type and verification terrorist. Can you please defend coverage as a meaningful metric of code quality? In particular, coverage is not related to path coverage or related to functional correctness. You're right. It, it's it's not. But we don't have we unless you're writing all your programs in cock, which I hope you aren't, um, because, well, that would take a long time to write everything. Uh, the metrics we have don't give us a complete picture of, you know, uh, how how well our code is performing. So this is one more metric that you can use. And you probably want to use more. Like I would like to add branch coverage and path coverage to this. I just don't quite know what that means in the context of Racket yet. So. Maybe it's more a measure, a, a metric for for your other uh, quality metrics than a metric for the quality of your code itself. It's a metric for the quality of your tests. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you, Spencer. <laughs>